Praise the Lord. I welcome you to our Bible study tonight. I pray that the Lord will give us all the attention we need, concentration we need, and the word will bear fruit in every life in Jesus' name. Let's pray together. Father, we do thank you for our Bible study. Thank you because week after week, you are leading us into the depth of the understanding of your word. I will pray, Lord, as we listen today, as we read your word today, and as we study today, that the benefit of reading, learning, and studying will be ours in Jesus' name. Open our eyes of understanding. Open our spirit that we behold wondrous, wonderful things out of your word in Jesus' name. I will pray that this word will so influence us, so enlighten us, and so impact us, will walk in newness of life in Jesus' name. We well, thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Tonight we are coming to the final chapter of Mark, that is the gospel according to St. Mark. And tonight we are looking at verses 1 through to 8. Let's start by reading verse 1. And when the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Salome, had bought sweet spices that they might come and anoint him. In verse 2 it says, And very early in the morning, the first day of the week, he came unto the sepulchre at the rising of the sun. In verse 3 it says, And they said among themselves, who shall roll us away the stone from the door that is from the entrance of the sepulchre? In verse 4, it says, And when they looked, they saw that the stone was rolled away, for it was very great and very heavy. Verse 5 tells us, And entering into the sepulchre, into the tomb, they saw a young man sitting, on the right hand side, clothed in a long white garment, and they were frightened. Verse 6 tells us, and he says unto them, Be not affrighted, ye seek Jesus of Nazareth, which was crucified, he is risen, he is not here. Behold the place where delayed him. Verse 7, but go your way. Tell his disciples and Peter that he goeth before you into Galilee. There shall you see him as he said unto you. Then in verse 8 were told, and he went out quickly and fled from the sepulchre. For they trembled and were amazed, neither said they anything to any man, for they were afraid. We have read verses 1 to 8, and it is talking about the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. As we look at the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, that resurrection is very central to the message of the gospel. The resurrection of the Lord Jesus is very central to the provision of salvation, redemption, justification that the Lord has made for us. Resurrection is central to the presentation of the message of repentance and the message of faith and the message of salvation. In fact, as you look at the New Testament from Matthew all through to the Revelation, you'll find the emphasis on the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so it is very important that the disciples were very sure, very definite about the resurrection. 
it is very important to you that everyone, everyone reading the Bible, everyone that wants to get saved will hear about the resurrection and will believe the resurrection. It is pivotal, it is central, and it is indispensable in our understanding of the message of the gospel, the message of grace, and the message of salvation redemption and the fullness of the provision of calvary for us tonight then we're looking at the message the unique blessings of christ's indisputable resurrection indisputable unarguable that he is something that is indebatable it's undebatable the resurrection of the lord jesus christ but then we have unique blessings and unique benefits from that resurrection there are three points we're looking at as we consider this message tonight number one inexcusable anxiety in the light of christ's prophesied resurrection you see the lord jesus christ had spoken about his resurrection and as the women were coming and they wanted to do a service to the body of Christ. They wanted to anoint the body of Christ so that it will not go rotting in the grave. But they had anxiety. The anxiety is who will roll us away the stone. Because Christ has already predicted, he had prophesied, he was going to rise from the dead. That anxiety of how will the stone be rolled away was unnecessary. Let's look at point number two. It's the inestimable angelic announcement of Christ's personal resurrection. The angel announced it, and he told them that you're looking for the living among the dead. Come see the place where he was laid. He is not here, he is risen. And that angelic announcement has great value. Inestimable uh, angelic announcement of Christ's personal resurrection. Number three, the inexhaustible abundance of the blessings we have of the goodness of God that flows to us that gets into our lives as we believe the resurrection. Inexhaustible abundance through Christ powerful resurrection a uh, point number one is the inexcusable anxiety in the light of christ's prophesied resurrection there are three things we're looking at here number one comprehensive statements of christ's predicted resurrection as we look at the utterances of christ at the uh, proclamation of christ and at the thing that the lord jesus christ had emphasized you will see that he predicted his resurrection and it's comprehensive it goes from this to that and we see everything that he prophesied number two will be the costly sacrifice they went out and they bought spices costly prices that they might anoint the body of christ costly sacrifice without comprehending precious revelation they didn't comprehend they didn't understand they didn't meditate on and they didn't look at all those statements that made and the revelation the precious revelation of the fact that at the third day he will rise again now three days are passed and they should have known if they were thinking of the words of the lord jesus christ they should have known that what they were buying this time to go and anoint the body Body, the body will not be in the grave again costly sacrifice but without comprehending a precious revelation number three consecrated service after confirmed pivotal redemption look at number one there we're looking at the statements jesus made about his resurrection he tells us in mark chapter 16 verses 1 and 2 mark chapter 16 verses 1 and 2 and when the sabbath was passed the sabbath was their day of rest among the jews that was saturday he had been crucified on 
uh, Friday. He had died on Friday. And now the Sabbath was passed. A whole day. Remember Jesus said, as Jonah was in the whale's belly for three days and three nights, even so will the Son of Man die and be buried. And at the end of the three days, he'll rise again. Friday is gone and then Saturday gone. And it says when the Sabbath was passed, according to the calculation of the children of Israel among the Jews, uh, they would take whatever part of the day. It was already a full day. And they started counting their day, ending the day at 6 p.m. And now the Sabbath was passed. It was Sunday morning and the first day of the week. It says Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Salome, and bought sweet spices that they might come and anoint him. They were expecting to see a dead body because they wanted to come and anoint the dead body. In verse 2, it says, here was their anxiety now, and very early in the morning, the first day of the week, they came unto the sepulchre at the rising of the sun. They came very quickly, and they were thinking, we will rule us away the stone. Look at John chapter 20, verse 1. In John chapter 20 verse 1, he's still talking about this resurrection, the first day of the week, comment Mary Magdalene early, when it was yet dark. Early in the morning, when it was yet dark, he came unto the sepulchre and seized the stone taken away from the sepulchre. In verse 9, he tells us, for as yet, the new not the scripture, as yet, they knew not the scripture. They wanted to anoint the body. As yet, they knew not the scripture. They woke up, they rose up early in the morning. As yet, they knew not the scripture. And it appears they loved Jesus Christ and they loved his dead body and they wanted due honor to the dead body. But as yet, they knew not the scripture that he must rise again from the dead. Very important, we need to know the scriptures because there are people that sacrifice, there are people that my even serve, there are people that my work, there are people that might do quite a lot of things for the honor of God in their mind, for the glory of God in their mind, but as yet they know not the scripture. What scripture? Let's come back to Matthew, Matthew chapter 16, verse 21. Matthew chapter 16, verse 21, here is what Jesus Christ had said, that he must rise again. It says, from that time forth began Jesus to show unto his disciples how that he must, how that he must go on to Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and the chief priests and the scribes and be killed, underline this, and be raised again the third day and be raised again the third day. They heard that. That had become part of scripture. The very words of Jesus. And Jesus had said, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. They didn't think of this. And be raised again the third day. They knew not this scripture. They heard it. But he didn't think of it. Look at uh, Matthew chapter 17, uh, verse 22. In Matthew chapter 17, uh, looking at uh, verse uh, 22, the Lord Jesus still talking about his resurrection. And while they are both in Galilee, Jesus said unto them, Jesus said unto them, The Son of Man shall be betrayed into the hands of men. And then in verse 23, it says in verse 23, And they shall kill him. And the third day he shall be raised again. The third day he shall be raised again. He repeated it over and over. He was going to rise up the third day. And they were exceeding sorry. They were sorrowful. In Mark chapter 9, verse 31. Mark chapter 9, we're looking at verse 31. It's still emphasizing his resurrection. He'll be killed and then he'll rise up. And he always told them on the third day, 
He could calculate that. That was not uh, difficult to remember. And it says in Mark chapter 9, verse 31, for he taught his disciples and said unto them, the Son of Man is delivered into the hands of men, and they shall kill him. Look at this again. And after that he is killed, he shall rise the third day. After that he is killed, he shall rise the third day. It tells us in verse 32. In verse 32, but they understood not that saying. And they were afraid to ask him. Mark chapter 10, we're looking at verse 33. Mark chapter 10, reading from verse 33. Saying, behold, we go up to Jerusalem. They were getting nearer and nearer Jerusalem. And the time of betrayal was getting nearer. The time of arrest was getting nearer. And the time of all those indignities done to him, the time was getting nearer, the time of the crucifixion and of the death. And then after the death, the resurrection is spoke about. That time was coming nearer. Behold, we go up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man shall be delivered unto the chief priests and unto the scribes, and they shall condemn him to death. And they shall deliver him to the Gentiles. And then in verse 34, in verse 34, and they shall mock him and shall scorch him and shall speak upon him and shall kill him. And the third day he shall rise again. And when you think about just this sentence alone, or this in verse 34 alone, he predicted, he prophesied. They shall mock him, they saw that fulfilled. They shall scourge him, they saw that fulfilled. They shall spit upon him, they saw that fulfilled. They shall kill him, they saw that fulfilled. Normally, they should not think of the rest. That if all the other things he predicted, he prophesied, were fulfilled. This last one, and the third day, he shall rise again. They should have thought about that, and they should have known it will happen. And look at Luke chapter 9, verse 22. In Luke chapter 9, reading from verse 22, it tells us, Seeing the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected of the elders and the chief priests and scribes look at this and be slain and be raised the third day and be raised the third day in mark chapter 14 verse 27 mark 14 verse 27 here he tells us and jesus says unto them all ye shall be offended because of me this night for it is written, I will smite the shepherd, and the sheep shall be scattered. And then in verse 28, he joins this, but after that I am risen. After that I am risen. He told them about the resurrection. After that I am risen, I will go before you into Galilee. And so now, as we have read all that, everything Jesus had said, they had no reason, they had no excuse to remain in doubt, to remain in darkness, and to remain wondering what would have happened. On the third day, he will rise again, and he rose according to his word, according to the prophecy. Let's come back now to Mark chapter 16, and we're looking at here from verse 1 costly sacrifice without comprehending precious revelation what's the precious revelation the precious revelation that he will rise the third day the precious revelation you will not find him in the grave the precious revelation his body will not need any anointing any kind of ointment what a revelation were they neglecting were they overlooking that he will be alive he will have risen up with a glorious body costly sacrifice without comprehending precious revelation and when the sabbath was passed mary magdalene and mary the mother of jesus and salome had bought 
sweet spices, they spent money, they spent energy, they spent everything to buy the sweet spices, costly, that they might come and anoint him. Look at verse 2. In verse 2, and very early in the morning, they have been thinking about it all through the night. Wouldn't you think that's great love? That's great sacrifice? That's great service? Wouldn't you think that's great uh, devotion unto the Lord? The Lord was not thinking like that. Heaven was not thinking like that. Why? Because the important pivotal, indispensable, indisputable resurrection. They didn't think of that. That's the important thing. That's the precious revelation. And they offered their sacrifice without comprehending precious revelation. And it says very early in the morning, the first day of the week, they came unto the sepulcher at the rising of the sun. Here is the anxiety. Look at verse 3. And it says, And they said among themselves, Who shall roll us away the stone from the door and from the entrance of the sepulchre? We need to get into the sepulchre. We need to find his dead body there. We need to anoint the body. But the stone is very great. The stone is very heavy. Who will help us and roll away the stone from the door of the sepulchre? You know the story now. It was already risen from the dead. It wasn't there anymore. The sacrifice and the anoint, wanting to anoint the body was not necessary anymore. Actually, the proper anointing had been done much, much earlier. Because Jesus said, if you look at John chapter 12, looking at verses 3 and 7. John chapter 12, we're looking at verse 3. It says, then Mary, this Mary, the genial sister to Martha, then took Mary a pound of ointment of spike nash, very costly, and anointed the feet of Jesus and wiped his feet with her hair. And the house was filled with the odor of the ointment. And then Judas complained, why wasn't that sold? And then the money can be given to the beggars. But Jesus said, the beggars and the poor, you always have with you. And in verse 7 it says, then said Jesus, let her alone. Against the day of my burying as she kept this against the day of my burying, as she kept this. Think about that now for a moment. This Mary, the sister of Martha, was thinking ahead. She believed that Jesus Christ will die for the salvation of humanity and for salvation too, and that Jesus Christ will rise again. Anything I can do any service I can render, any anointing I can give uh, in view of the fact that was going to die. And I will give that anointing for the burial, for the burying of the body. Anything I can do, I will do it now. And so she did that. But in the case of this other Mary Magdalene and Salome and Mary, the mother of James, they came early in the morning. They wanted to anoint the body. It was too late. If you are going to render any service to the Lord Jesus Christ, render that service at the right time. Can I tell you something? There are some people, they don't take care of their parents. They don't take care of daddy and of mommy while daddy is alive and should eat well. Daddy is alive, mommy is alive and should live comfortably. Daddy is alive, mommy is alive. At the time they ought to render service, sacrificial service to daddy and mommy, they are large. They are just free. They are not thinking about the parents. After the parents are dead now, all the food they should have given to the mother and to the father, they are bringing all that now. They are having a feast, they are throwing parties, and they are spending quite a lot. They are decorating the house, they are painting the house and doing everything. Believe them, we must have done that when they were alive. But if they are no more alive and when rendering that, mommy is not eating part of the food. And uh, daddy is not seeing all those conveniences we are preparing now. 
you are only feeding the people that are still alive. Even the people that didn't visit daddy or mommy when they were alive, that's all you are doing. If we're going to render any service, let's look at the precious revelation. Christ is going to rise again. And because he's going to rise again, he has told us he will die. He has told us he will be buried. He has told us he will rise again at the right time. That's when to offer the service unto the people. People. The same thing we can see in the church. When people are sick, that's why we should visit them. When people are down, that's why we should lift them up. When people are poor, that's when we should supply their need. But if after they have died, we're now coming and we're visiting and visiting, my brother, did you visit when they were alive? Those who are dead, they cannot sell that service anymore. They cannot enjoy those services anymore. Consider the precious revelation. And let us take care of the people while they're still alive. And let us do the right thing when it will matter. And it will serve the people we're trying to serve. Number three now is consecrated service after confirmed Pivotal redemption. We're coming to Mark chapter 16 and we're looking at verse 4. Mark chapter 16, verse 4. And when they looked, they saw that the stone was rolled away, for it was very great, very great consecrated service after confirmed redemption pivotal redemption what does that mean let's look at first corinthians chapter 15 verse 14 first corinthians chapter 15 we're looking at verse 14 and if christ be not risen then is a preaching vain and your faith also is vain if christ be not risen we're talking to mary magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Salome, if you find Christ there in the grave, and if you can render service there in the grave, then our faith is vain, our preaching is vain. It tells us in verse 17, in verse 17, and if Christ be not raised, your faith is vain, ye are yet in your sins. If we think we're going to find Christ in the grave, if we think that he has not risen again, and we're coming with the understanding, and we're coming with the mentality of offering service unto a dead Christ in the grave, and we're only talking, and we're only thinking about Christ is dead, Christ is dead. If we do not think about his indispensable resurrection, if we do not talk about his indisputable, indispensable, undebatable resurrection, if we don't have that at heart, our faith is vain. And we're yet in our sins. It says in verse 18, in verse 18, it says, Then they also which have fallen asleep in Christ, they are perished. Think about that. This is so pivotal to our redemption. And this is so important to our redemption that instead of, uh, you know, praising Mary, and the other Mary and then Salome and appreciating them because they woke up early in the morning. They wanted to go and anoint the body of Jesus. If we follow them and if we think they have done well and Christ was not risen, all those who are dead are dead in vain. It's telling us in Acts chapter 3 and verse 26, Acts chapter 3, verse 26, it tells us the reason for our salvation and the reason for the taking away of our sin is that Christ was raised from the dead unto you first God having raised up his son Jesus unto you first Christ having been raised up sent him to bless you in turning away every one of you from his iniquities it is the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ that turns us away from our iniquities. In fact, it is that resurrection 
that gives us repentance from sin and forgiveness from God. Look at Acts chapter 5, verse 30 and verse 31. Acts chapter 5, verse 30. The God of our fathers raised up Jesus. The God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom ye slew and hanged on a tree. Verse 31. Verse 31 now confirms him as God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior because of that resurrection. To be a prince and a savior because of rising from the dead to be the Lord and the savior for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. It tells us in Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10 verses 9 and 10. In Romans chapter 10 verse 9, it says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. If you will believe in your heart and confess with your mouth, that God has raised him from the dead only on that condition thou shalt be saved in verse 10 it says for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation we have to confess i believe that christ died for my sins but i believe that he rose again for my justification for the heart man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation if you have not believed on the death and the burial and the resurrection of the lord jesus christ you have not been saved yet you might treat the bible from cover to cover you might uh, take a uh, healing or whatever supply from the lord and you might believe there is god you will believe Jesus was a good man, a good prophet, a great prophet, a great teacher. If you have not believed that Jesus died for your sins and then he rose again triumphantly for your justification, you are not saved yet. It is when you believe that he died and was buried and rose again by the power of the Almighty God. It is then salvation comes unto you. Let's come to point number two now. Point number two is the inestimable angelic announcement of Christ's personal resurrection. Christ's personal resurrection. Look at three things here. Number one, angels' indisputable announcement of Christ's personal resurrection. Number two, assuring infallible appearances after Christ's personal resurrection. And then number three is apostolic irresistible affirmation of Christ's personal resurrection. Very important. Look at number one, angels' indisputable announcement of Christ's personal resurrection. We're told in Mark chapter 16, verses 5 and 6, and entering into the sepulchre, they saw a young man, that's an angel, sitting on the right hand side, clothed in a long white garment, and they were affrighted. In verse 6, it says, in verse 6, there's the angel talking to them now. And there's the angel bringing the message and the announcement of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ unto them. He was going to assure them, you will not find the living among the dead. Christ is risen. He came from heaven. The stone was rolled away and he waited there. And as these women came and they saw that angel in the form of a young man dressed in white, they were afraid, they were affrighted. And now he was going to tell them what had happened. And in Mark chapter 16, verse 6, and he says unto them, Be not afraid, be not affrighted. Ye seek Jesus of Nazareth, which was crucified. Ye seek Jesus of Nazareth, which was crucified. He's risen. If you are listening to him, you would have remembered that. 
If you had thought about his word, you would have remembered that. If you had meditated on his word, you would have remembered that. That he said he will rise again. He is risen. He is not here. Behold the place where they laid him. Look at verse 7 now, part of the angelic uh, uh, announcement that he gave them. Uh, but go your way. Tell his disciples and Peter that he goeth before you into Galilee. There ye shall see him uh, as he said unto you. Underline that in your Bible, as he said unto you. Already he died, as he said unto you. He was buried as he said unto you. Now he's risen as he said unto you. And he's going before you. And he will meet you in Galilee as he said unto you. That's the angel's announcement. Look at John chapter 20. We're looking at verse 11. John chapter 20. And we're reading from verse 11. But Mary's church without at the sepulchre weeping and as she wept she stooped down and looked into the sepulchre in verse 12 it says and says two angels in white sitting the one at the head and the other at the feet where the body of jesus had lain in verse 13 it says and they say unto her woman why weepest thou, woman? Why weepest thou? Well, she was weeping because she thought Jesus was still dead. And she couldn't find Jesus. And she couldn't see Jesus. Woman, why weepest thou? She was weeping because she never thought, she didn't think of the proclamation of Jesus, I will rise again. And when I rise the third day, you will meet me in Galilee. Woman, why weepest thou? Because she heard the words of Jesus, I will rise again. But she didn't make effort to believe that. Why weepest thou? Because she heard the words of Jesus. She didn't meditate on those words. Because she heard the words of Jesus on the third day, I will rise again. And she didn't believe. She didn't obey. She didn't meditate. She didn't rejoice because of what Jesus had said. Many times we see the promise of Christ. What he had said. And the proclaimed blessing. And the prophesied blessing and the predicted blessing. And we have a problem. If we thought of what Christ had said, if we meditated on what Christ has said, there'll be no reason for weeping at all. There are times the whole church might come together and they're crying and they're weeping. And you think the weeping is legitimate? No, not legitimate. If we forget what he has said, if we don't remember what he has said, if we do not bring to mind and bring to heart what he had said, we might be weeping unnecessarily. Woman, why weepest thou? She says unto them, because they have taken away my Lord. Mary, that's supposition. Woman, that's supposition. And that supposition is not correct when we abandon the words of Christ, when we forget the words of Christ, and we just see the end product, and we cannot find the body of Christ now, then thoughts will come. They have taken away my Lord, and I know not where they laid him. Look at verse 14. In verse 14, and when she had thus said, she turned herself back, and saw Jesus standing, and saw Jesus standing. But understand, she wasn't expecting to see Jesus alive. And even though she saw Jesus standing, since she wasn't expecting to see him alive, she didn't think it would be Jesus, and knew not that it was Jesus. She saw Jesus, and knew not that it was Jesus. She saw the solution and didn't know it was the solution. She saw the Savior 
and didn't know it was the Savior. She saw the answer to her question, and she didn't know that was the answer. You know, many times we may see the answer, the solution, the deliverance, see the salvation, and never know that is the answer because we're not thinking in the right direction. We're not expecting that that will be Christ, my Redeemer, my Savior, my Lord, because she didn't know and she didn't see Christ will rise from the dead. Look at verse 15. In verse 15, Jesus says unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? Whom seekest thou? She supposing him to be the gardener she is supposing him to be the gardener when we forget the words of jesus that says i will rise again when we refuse to calculate one two three three days and then i'll be up from the graves when we forget and we're not meditating on the words of jesus this is what he said, and heaven and earth will pass away, but my word shall not pass away. When we don't think about the words of Jesus, and religion is just out of secular thinking, out of natural thinking, religion does not expect the miracle of resurrection. Our supposition will keep us sad. Our supposition will keep us sorrowful. Jesus said, why we pass thou, and supposing him to be the gardener, says unto him, Sir, if thou hast born him hence, tell me where thou hast laid him, and I will take him away. Verse 16, in verse 16, Jesus said unto her, Mary, all these days, you didn't believe my word, Mary. You didn't think about my resurrection, Mary. Did you think I deceived the disciples that I said I was going to rise again, Mary? Or did you think that I had no power to fulfill my word? The resurrection was such a mystery to you and such a great miracle. You didn't know it will happen, Mary. And then she turned herself and said unto him, Rabboni, which is to say, Master, all of a sudden the eyes were open. The voice judged her and jolted her and brought her to realization when Jesus said, Mary. And then she turned and said, Rabboni, Master. Then in verse 17, in verse 17, it said, Jesus says unto her, Touch me not. For I'm not yet ascended to my father, but go to my brethren and say unto them, I ascend unto my father and your father, my father and your father, and to my God and your God. And then in verse 18, we're told, now she believed, and Mary Magdalene came, hurriedly now, excitedly now, joyfully now, cheerfully now, and Mary Magdalena came and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord. She has seen the Lord, not in the grave. She has seen the Lord, not in the sepulcher. She has seen the Lord, not dead, alive. I've seen the risen Lord. I've seen the resurrected Lord. I've seen the glorified Lord. I've seen exactly the faithful Lord as he has said that has been done. I have seen the Lord and that he has spoken these things unto her. Let's look at number two now. Assuring infallible appearances after Christ's personal resurrection. Assuring infallible appearances after Christ's personal resurrection. In Mark chapter 16, verse 7, here is what the angel had said, but go your way, tell his disciples, and Peter, tell his disciples, but after you've told every one of them, in particular, single out Peter, tell his disciples, and Peter, that he goeth before you into Galilee, there shall ye see him as he said unto you. 
the angel brought them back to the word Christ had spoken. If anybody saw an angel today, as some people are claiming they see angels, angels will not tell you anything different from what Christ has said. The angel, if you saw a good angel, a holy angel, an angel from heaven, that angel will tell you the same thing Christ had said as he had said unto you. There are people that are claiming that they died and they then went up to glory and they saw myriads of angels and they saw this and they saw that and then they come back here and then they begin to tell us or tell people false doctrine. They didn't see anything. All that is deception. If they went to glory and if they saw angels, if you did go to heaven and if you actually saw angels, you're not going to say any other thing you will say exactly what Christ has said as he had said as he had said unto you the people that say they fall into trance and they have prophetic ministry and in their prophetic ministry a divine voice spoke to them if you heard a divine voice the divine voice is not going to tell you any other thing it's going to tell you the words of Christ as he said unto you and then as he had said they should meet him in galilee now infallible proof an infallible appearance that jesus christ was risen we're looking at acts chapter one acts chapter one we're looking at verse three in acts of the apostles chapter one looking at verse three to whom also he showed himself alive that's after his death, to whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs. By many infallible proofs. He appeared unto Mary. He appeared unto the two disciples on their way to Emmaus. He appeared unto Savers, unto Peter. He appeared unto John. He appeared unto eleven. He appeared unto even more than five hundred at the same time. Many infallible proofs. He showed himself to be alive, being seen of them forty days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. Can I tell you something here? When Christ was alive, he spoke about the kingdom of God. He says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. When Christ was alive, he spoke about the kingdom of God, and he said, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. When Christ was alive, all that he went about, he went about healing and preaching and teaching and healing all people, speaking about the kingdom of God. Now he's risen from the dead and the glorified Christ is now speaking to the disciples. What was he talking about? Speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. There is no change. That's why Jesus said uh, that his word will not pass away. That's why we are sure that Jesus Christ the same yesterday and today and forever. We need to emphasize this to ourselves that if we have seen the Lord and if we are receiving from the Lord, if we are getting any revelation from the Lord at all, any teaching from the Lord at all, what he said before is there. What he said after his day and when he appeared to his own disciples with the many infallible proofs all those 40 days before his ascension was he talking about he's still talking about the same thing the kingdom of god and when those apostles went forth what were they talking about the kingdom of god and when paul the apostle came online to also preach what was he talking about the kingdom of god and as christ appeared to john the beloved on the isle of patmos what was he talking about the kingdom of god and so let's understand there's no change the word of god remains and abides the same assuring infallible appearances after christ's personal resurrection we're looking at first corinthians chapter 15 in first corinthians chapter 15 reading from verse 4 
First Corinthians, reading from chapter 15 and verse 4, and that he was buried. Here is Paul the Apostle now, and he's reminding the church, he's reminding Christendom, he's reminding the world that Christ was buried, and he rose again. Tell me the next three words there. The third day, the third day, there's no contradiction. You come to the Gospels, the third day he rose again. And you come to the Epistles, the third day he rose again. He said he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. Look at verse 5. Then it says in verse 5, and that he was seen of Sabas, that's Peter, and of the twelve, after the resurrection, it was seen of those people. And then in verse 6, after that, after he had shown himself to Peter, after he had showed himself to the twelve apostles, you say, but uh, I thought there were eleven, since Judas was not there. Yes, there were eleven, but you know, they chose Matthias, and that one added uh, to them. They became the twelve, and he also saw him. And he says now in verse 6, in verse 6, he says, after that, he was seen of above five hundred brethren at once. Can you think about that? There are some people, unbelievers they are, they may call themselves other names, but this is the name God gives them. This is the name the Bible gives them. They are unbelievers. They might say that they are theologians. If they don't believe the resurrection, if they say, you know, resurrection that they are talking about, about Jesus Christ rose from the dead, they say it's hallucination. They say it is the thinking of the people. They say it is psychological. They say that they were thinking, you know, as you know, when somebody is thinking about something often and often and is thinking about it, it might see a kind of a apparition and it might see an image. And that image, they might think that is the Christ. And they will say, He rose again. Hold on. Those disciples did not believe easily like that. Those disciples, after the women came and told them, after those two people from the road to Emmaus, after they told them, they did not believe, they did not accept it just like that. It was not apparition. It was a definite revelation and appearance of the Lord Jesus Christ. You remember Thomas? When they told Thomas and they said, we have seen the Lord, is risen again. What did Thomas say? Did Thomas just say, yes, okay, I believe. He said, I will not believe. I accept, I see the print of the nail in his hand. And I thrust my hand into his side. And then we're told the eighth day Christ came and appeared unto them and said, Thomas, come here and see my hand and see my side. And then when Thomas said that, he said, my Lord and my God and Jesus said, you didn't believe at the first time he said but now because you have seen me that was believed blessed are those who have not seen me and yet I believe all the people that saw Jesus Christ they saw the real Christ they saw the real sin Christ and they saw the glorified Christ now understand 500 people cannot have the same dream, the same night, and see the same scene at the same time. 500 people cannot see an apparition and see that apparition the same time, the same moment, all the 500 at the same time. This is real. It was seen of above 500 brethren at once of whom the greater part remain unto this present, but some are falling asleep. You know what Paul the Apostle is saying? He said, before he became a Christian, Christ rose from the dead. After many years of, uh, you know, the Pentecost, and he was not born again yet, it is a firm Christ rose from the dead, and then eventually he saw the Lord, and eventually heard from the Lord Christ rose again, and now the time is writing to the Corinthians. Many years have passed from the time of the resurrection until that time. And he said, a greater part, the greater part, what does that mean? Out of the more than 500 brethren that saw the Lord Jesus, that he rose from the dead, more than 250. 
he was still alive. The greater part still remained alive until the writing of the epistle to the Corinthians. Although some of them are falling asleep. Look at verse 7. In verse 7 it says, after that it was seen of James and then of all the apostles. And now in verse 8 he's saying, and last of all he was seen of me also. It was seen of me also as of one born out of due time. And look at number three now. Apostolic irresistible affirmation of Christ's personal resurrection. Let us look at Acts of the Apostle chapter 4. And we're reading from verse 1. Acts of the Apostle chapter 4, reading from verse 1. And as they speak unto the people, the priests, and the captain of the temple and the Sadducees came upon them. Look at verse 2. In verse 2, being grieved that they taught the people and preached through Jesus the resurrection of the dead. They were unhappy. They were sad that the disciples, the apostles, were preaching the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Let me ask you a question. Why were they sad? Why were they sorrowful? Why were they grieved? Understand? They were the people that went to Pilate and they said that deceiver, when he was alive, said he will rise the third day. Everybody knew that that's what he said. He was going to rise the third day. Now they said, set a watch and put a seal, a stamp on the, on the stone that is going to cover the sepulchre so that uh, the disciples will not come and steal him away and say he has risen from the dead and the last arrow shall be worse than the first and Pilate said you have the watch send them there and then he put the seal there eventually on the third day the angel came from heaven there was a mighty thunder and a mighty earthquake and the stone was rolled away and those uh, soldiers they fell on their faces and eventually they saw that christ truly had risen and the people that put them there those uh, chief priests and those uh, leaders of the jewish people they went to them and they said the man is risen as he said it's not that this is what happened an angel came and then there was a mighty thunder and a mighty earthquake and the stone was rolled away. He rose from the dead. And those people, they bribed those soldiers and they gave them large amounts of money. And they said, if this comes to Pilate, if this comes to the governor, that you were careless and you were not vigilant and you slept on duty and then we will we will rescue you so if he asked you say that while we were sleeping you must not be sleeping young girl and you are watching but tell him while we were sleeping the disciples came and stole him away everybody knows that is not right everybody knows that deception if you were sleeping a soldier how did you know the name and the title and the people that came to steal him away I thought you said you were sleeping you see those people wanted to silence the disciples because they had spent a lot of money to hide and to keep away the resurrection of Jesus from the people but now the disciples were sure and the disciples were so firm about it he rose from the dead peter did you see him john did you see him all the 12 apostles did you see him and then all the believers more than 500 did you see him and their firm we saw him he showed himself by many infallible proofs he rose again and because of that they were preaching about the resurrection of christ and in verse 3, it says in verse 3, And they laid hands on them and put them in hold until the next day, for it was now even tide. I'm going to ask you a question now. If you told a lie, if you deceived the leaders, and now the leaders said, because of this statement, you're going to be jailed, and we're going to punish you. You might even lose your life. If you see those leaders and if you see those officials preparing to kill you and to destroy you, 
and you know that they are destroying you because of a lie will you not want to come out of that and say well hold on actually uh, that wasn't true you see if the resurrection was not true the disciples the apostles will not stake their lives on the rest on the resurrection they will not die for what they knew to be false but they were ready to go to prison because they said that was a fact and that was the truth we didn't believe it originally until we saw him he rose from the dead and so those apostles gave irresistible affirmation of christ personal death and it is because of that now we're expecting you know, that at when the time comes the dead in Christ shall rise and then we which are alive will be raised up together with them in first Thessalonians we're looking at chapter four first Thessalonians we're looking at chapter four and we're looking at verse 14 first Thessalonians chapter for verse 14 for if we believe that jesus died and rose again that's the foundation of our faith that's the foundation of our salvation that's the foundation of the grace of god in our lives we must believe that he died and that he rose again and for if we believe that jesus died and rose again even so them also which sleep in jesus will god bring with him look at verse 15 in verse 15 it says for this we say unto you by the word of the lord underline that this will say unto you by the word of the lord this is not supposition this is not theory this is not a theologian talking this is the word of the lord for this we say unto you by the word of the lord that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent, precede, or hinder them which are asleep. In verse 16, it says, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise forth. If we believe that Jesus died and rose again, and on that faith that he died and rose again, on that faith we're saved. On that faith we have the grace of God. On that faith we have the righteousness of Christ. On that faith we're candidates for heaven. On that basis that we believe that he died and he rose again, we ourselves, if we die before he comes, will rise again. And if we have not died, it says we shall be changed and we shall experience the rapture. It says the dead in Christ shall rise first. And then in verse 17, verse 17 says, then we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord. We who remain, the believers were still alive. They have not died. And then the rapture takes place. And the rapture is about to happen now. It says, then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. To meet the risen Lord in the air. To meet the glorified Lord in the air. Not in the grave. No, he's not dead again. It's risen. We're to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Look at verse 18. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. You have to believe the resurrection before you can have the comfort. Wherefore, Comfort one another with these words that Christ died, that Christ was buried, and that Christ rose again. And because he rose again, that's why we have confidence in the Lord. Now we shall rise with him. And because of that hope of resurrection, it says, Wherefore, comfort one another with these words we're coming to point number three now in point number three it tells us about the inexhaustible abundance we're going to have through christ's powerful resurrection christ's powerful resurrection it tells us in mark chapter 16 verse 7 mark chapter 16 7 
But go your way. Tell his disciples and Peter that he goes before you into Galilee. There ye shall see him as he said unto you. The angel told Mary and said, Go your way. Tell his disciples. Why? What did the angel say? Go and tell the Pharisees. Go and tell the Sadducees that Jesus Christ is risen from the dead. You remember what Abraham said and told that rich man? If they don't believe Moses and the prophets, if they don't believe the words that they have spoken, neither shall they believe even if one rose from the dead. Actually, they knew that he rose from the dead, yet they did not believe. There was no point trying to tell them because they have heard and they bribed the watchmen and they bribed the girls with a large amount of money. They didn't want to believe. After that resurrection, the Sadducees still stayed in their tradition and they still stayed in their dogma. They still did not believe. But the angel said, go tell his disciples and tell Peter. Why Peter? After saying, go and tell his disciples, because you see, Peter did what the other disciples had not done. All of them fled away when Christ was arrested. But Peter stood near, although he was walking far off, afar from him, and then he denied the Lord, number one. Number two, he denied and said, I don't know what you are saying. Number three, with an oath, he said, I know not this man. But then he went out and he wept bitterly. And the Lord had forgiven him. And to give assurance of that forgiveness, that's why the angel said, Peter might be thinking, am I still a disciple? Am I still a follower? Am I still counted as part of the servants of God? Forgiveness had come. And because of that, go your way and tell his disciples and tell Peter that he goeth before you into Galilee. There shall you see him. There shall you see him. If you want to see the Lord, there's a place to see the Lord. It must be in the word according to the word he has spoken. If you go to Samaria, you might not see him because he said go into Galilee. There shall you see him. If you go to Capernaum, you may not see him there because they say go to Galilee and there shall you see him. You see there are people, they're praying and fasting. They say they're waiting on the Lord. They want to see the Lord. And they're going to an assembly where the Lord is not exalted and where the Lord is not proclaimed and where his word is not preached. You might fast, you might pray, you might roll on the ground, you might do whatever. You go to the place where he had said, there I will meet you. Go into Galilee, and there shall you see him as he said unto you. Three things we're looking at. Number one, experiential forgiveness and full salvation through his resurrection. Number two, extraordinary feeling with the fructifying spirit through his resurrection. Number three, eternal fellowship with faithful saints through his resurrection. All those references are there for you. You can read all the references yourself, but let's pick a few of them. Experiential forgiveness and full salvation through his resurrection. It tells us in Acts of the Apostles chapter 13. Acts chapter 13, we're looking at verse 37. Acts chapter 13, verse 37, but he whom God raised again saw no corruption. He, Christ, whom God raised again saw no corruption. In verse 38, look at this. Be it known unto you therefore, men and brethren, that through this man, risen Christ, resurrected Christ, the glorified Christ, the one who died and was buried and rose again through Christ, through this man is preached unto you forgiveness of sins. No other way. 
And there's no other way to have forgiveness, to have freedom from sin, to have redemption, to have salvation, to have justification, to be born again, to become a child of God, and to be a candidate for heaven, except through this man who rose from the dead. Through this man is preached unto you the forgiveness of sins. And then it says in verse 39, in verse 39, and by him, only by him, and by him, by no other person, by him, all that believe are justified from all sins from which ye could not be justified by the law of Moses. This is the only way, and this is the only one who can bring us into that life eternal. Look at First Peter chapter 1, verse 3. First Peter chapter 1. We're reading from verse 3. It tells us in verse 3, it says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again, that being born again, has begotten us again, that becoming a new creature in Christ, has begotten us again unto a lively hope. Look at this. Unto a lively hope. Underline this. Unto a lively hope by the resurrection of jesus christ from the dead that's how we have the lively hope and that's how we have the new life that christ has purchased and look at john chapter 11 and we're reading from verse 25 john 11 reading from verse 25 here is the assurance has given us that jesus christ is the resurrection and the life and because his resurrection and the life as we believe him and we believe his resurrection life will come to us as well jesus said unto her i am the resurrection and the life he that believeth in me though he were dead yet shall he live and then in verse 26 the lord said now and whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die believest thou this look at number two extraordinary feeling with the fructifying spirit through his resurrection it tells us in acts chapter 2 reading from verse 31 Acts chapter 2, from verse 31, it says, He, seeing this before, spake of the resurrection of Christ. That is, as we look at the Old Testament, as we read the Psalms, David, who wrote the second Psalm, said, Christ will rise again. David, who wrote the 16th Psalm, said, He will rise again. He then seeing this speak of the resurrection of Christ, that his soul was not led in the grave, not led in Sheol, not led in hell, neither his flesh did see corruption. Verse 32, in verse 32, this Jesus as God raised up, this Jesus as God raised up, it was prophesied this jesus as god raised up he himself predicted it and this jesus as god raised up whereof we all are witnesses see the fruit of that and see the result of that it says in verse 33 in verse 33 therefore being by the right hand of god exalted he died he was buried, he rose again, then he ascended to heaven, and therefore being by the right hand of God exalted, and having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Ghost, he has shed forth this which he now see and hear. He's telling us all the blessings we have now in the kingdom of God, all the blessings we have, salvation, Forgiveness, freedom from sin, grace, saving grace, sanctifying grace, sustaining grace, sufficient grace. All that we have now, the Spirit of God, the Spirit of God at salvation, 
the spirit of God at sanctification, the spirit of God at the time of being endured with power from on high. Everything we have now, the promise of the Father, the promise of the Holy Ghost coming upon us, you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and Judea and in Samaria and to the uttermost part of the earth. All the blessings we have now of healing, of protection, of preservation all the blessings we have now of edification enlightenment all the blessings we have now as heirs of christ heirs of god and joint heirs with christ all by the resurrection of the lord jesus christ look at that verse 33 acts chapter 2 verse 33 therefore being by the right hand of god exalted and having received of the Father, the promise of the Holy Ghost, a shed forth this which ye now see and hear. And then our eternal fellowship with faithful saints in heaven is by the resurrection of the Lord. Eternal fellowship with God. Look at First Corinthians chapter 15. We're reading from verse 19. First Corinthians chapter 15, we're looking at verse 19. And it says, if in this world only, if in this life only, we have hope in Christ, we have all men most miserable. If we say, well, I have healing, that's all you have. I have provision, that's all you have. I have prosperity, that's all you have. I have land, I have house. That's all you have. I have children. That's all you have. I have this natural, physical, touchable, visible, tangible blessings. If that's all you have. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we have all men, of all men, the most miserable. Look at verse 20. It says in verse 20 there, but now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slave. The reason we're going to have fellowship with him, and the reason we're going to have an eternity of joy, eternity of blessedness with the Lord is because of the resurrection, and it's because we believe the resurrection. Look at verse 51. Uh, that's uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 51. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep. But we shall all be changed. In verse 52, it says, In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. That's our hope. That's our faith. That's our expectation. That's what's going to happen. Because Christ died, he was buried. And then he rose again, and because we have believed in him, we identify with him, we're dead with him, we're buried with him in baptism, and we're risen up together with him into new life. Because of that, the mystery is going to happen unto us. And when Christ comes and he wants to take the saints away, we shall be one, or you will be one of those people. We shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. Look at Colossians chapter 3 verse 1. Colossians chapter 3 verse 1. If ye then be risen with Christ, identify with him, believe him, the same power that raised up Jesus from the dead, that power dwells in you. The same spirit that raised up Jesus from the dead, that spirit abides in you. And you are risen now with Christ to newness of life. If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth, on the right hand of God. In verse 2, it says, Set your affection, set your love, set your passion, and your pursuit, and your drive, set your passion and affection on things above, not on things on the earth. It says in verse 3, For ye are dead, and your life is seed with Christ in God. Look at the glorious thing going to happen in verse 4. In verse 4, it says, When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, is coming again. 
when Christ who is alive shall appear is coming again he said believe in God believe also in me in my father's house are many mansions if it were not so I would have told you I go to prepare a place for you and if I go and prepare a place for you I will come again remember the mistake and remember the error and then remember the anxiety of Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and, and Salome remember the anxiety who oh, shall roll us away the stone they heard that Jesus will rise from the dead they were not thinking of that and they were not uh, meditating on that and they were not planning uh, everything they wanted to do on the basis that Christ will rise again now it's come to your turn it's come to my turn that Christ will appear Christ is coming again and there are many people that hear that word and they don't believe there are many people that hear that word Christ shall appear is coming again and they're not planning and they're not thinking and they're not meditating and they're not projecting everything they're doing according to that infallible indisputable undebatable word that christ will come again don't make the same mistake that they made he is coming and when christ who is alive shall appear then shall ye also appear with him in glory that's why you must be saved so that you appear with him in glory. That's why without holiness, no man shall save the Lord. You must be holy if you're expecting you will appear with him in glory. That's why you must keep on obeying the word of God, occupy until I come because you know Christ is coming. And you put your life on the altar and you consecrate unto the Lord knowing that Christ is coming. You are not just living life and just active here, active there without thinking of what Christ had said. Like those people did not think of what Christ had said. Those disciples locking themselves behind closed door until they were sure that Christ has no reason. It's come to your turn now. Don't lock up and don't just behind any closed door Christ is going to appear Christ is going to come and when Christ who is our life shall appear as you believe and as you plan your life and as you act out the word and as you are living in expectation of his appearing when Christ shall appear then shall ye also appear with him in glory praise the Lord you'll be there he's coming praise the Lord you'll be ready Born again, you'll be ready. Enduring every day, persevering every day, you'll be ready. Sanctified, made holy, you'll be ready. And baptized in the Holy Ghost with power from on high to serve the Lord with all your strength and to leave a mark in this world in which you are living and to do what others are not able to do or are not willing to do and to bring many people to righteousness and salvation so that when it shall appear, you, by the grace of God, my brother, my sister, my daughter, my son, there, so that you will appear with him in glory. May that be confirmed in your life in Jesus' name. Let's rise up now and let us talk to the Lord in prayer. Let's thank the Lord has refreshed our mind and has given us real revelation concerning the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ and has given us real understanding today of this indisputable resurrection of Jesus Christ. Stand up, my brother. Stand up, my sister. And uh, pray to the Lord. Open your mouth. Don't just, uh, you know, bend down your head and then be thinking. Uh, we're praying now so that the grace of God will come uh, into our lives. Already we see the inexcusable Usable anxiety in the light of Christ predicted prophesied resurrection and then he has prophesied he has declared unto us he's coming again and we don't need to have any anxiety he's giving us promise we don't have need to have any anxiety instead of anxiety pin your faith on what Christ has said have a comprehensive understanding of of the statements of Christ's predicted appearance. Christ predicted coming again. He has risen. We believe that already. Don't just offer costly sacrifice without comprehending the precious truth, the precious revelation, and the precious instruction 
he has given us. He says, meet me in Galilee. That's where he has appointed. Don't go to Samaria. If you mention Galilee, don't go to another place. Go to the place he has mentioned. A place where people serve him in truth, in holiness, in spirit. That's what he has ordained. How we must worship God. Don't just worship. Don't go to the Pharisees. Don't go to the Sadducees. Wanting to be sure of resurrection. Wanting to be sure of his coming again. Pharisees will not help. They don't believe. All those religious traditionalists will not help. They don't believe this. But where he has ordained. And don't just offer costly sacrifice without holding on to the precious revelation. Consecrated service after you are saved. After you are born again, that's a pivotal, redemptive experience. And then after that, come now and offer your gift unto the Lord. And remember the angelic announcement. The angelic announcement. Angels don't have denomination. Angels don't have tradition. Angels are not serving Pharisee or Sadducee. Angels are not serving any religion, whether religion of the left or the religion of the right. Angels are coming as ministers of God unto earth, and they affirmed the resurrection. And as they affirmed the resurrection, Christ also appeared with many infallible proofs unto his own disciples. And more than 500 saw him at once that's not a dream 500 at once that's not hallucination 500 at a time that's not trials 500 at a time that's real infallible proof of christ's resurrection and the apostles they gave their lives they were willing to be beaten they were willing to be imprisoned they were willing to even die because they were matters of the resurrection. Nobody will die for something he knows to be fake, not to be true. But would he spend eternity? Christ rose from the dead. And the apostles affirmed that. And now the blessings you have, inexhaustible, salvation comes. The blood of Jesus is weightier and mightier than our tears. The resurrection of Christ, weightier and greater than our thoughts. It's not your thinking, it's not your emotion that saves you. By the resurrection of Jesus Christ, forgiveness comes, freedom comes, righteousness comes, holiness comes, grace comes, endurance comes, power comes, peace, purity, power they all come because of the resurrection of Christ. And then the sustaining strength for you to move on until you see the Lord face to face. It will keep you standing. It will keep you faithful. It will keep you strong. It will keep you abiding until it come by the power of his resurrection. No fear in your heart. No kind of Anxiety in your heart. Will I make it? Will I not make it? He rose from the dead to help you stand firm, faithful, righteous unto the end. And when Christ shall appear, you also will appear with him in glory. Praise the Lord. I'll see you in glory. Praise the Lord. You'll see me in glory. Praise the Lord. We'll see one another in glory. The Lord confirmed the power, the strength, and the grace of God abundant in your life. In Jesus' name. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for the revelation of the word and for the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. We believe. And because we believe, we have freedom from sin salvation from sin were made righteous were made holy and because we believe all the grace we need 
is given unto us by the resurrection we have justification by that resurrection we have healing by that resurrection we have deliverance by that resurrection we have dominion by that resurrection we have assurance by that resurrection we have the strength and the power and we're going to go on with your strength and conviction until the very end all the grace anyone everyone needs all the power the spiritual strength everyone needs grant unto everyone in jesus name lord we believe that christ died that he rose again that he appeared to his own disciples they saw him and he showed them many infallible proofs he ascended to heaven we believe he's coming again to you and when he comes i pray the grace to stay faithful abide faithful abide standing grant to every one of your children none of us were weak let the weak say i am strong let the sick say i am well i am healed and let the poor say i am rich and provide everything your people need by the resurrection of our lord and savior jesus christ thank you lord because we know you have answered in jesus mighty name we pray amen god bless you the resurrection power keep on working in your life every time in jesus name